Hey, this is Alex, part of Mike Lively's instructional design and distance learning team at Northern Kentucky University. And right now I'm just waiting for this page to load. It's a flex page, as you can tell. It has that lame, same old loading screen that we are all familiar with. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could change that loading screen into something like really cool as opposed to just this? My friends, we can change it. That's what this tutorial is all about, changing this loading screen. Okay, to do this, we're going to use some source code that's already been written by this guy named Josh. Now, to get to his site, let's go to your favorite web browser. I'm using Firefox right now. Oh, look, that's Northern Kentucky University's web page. That's pretty neat. But go up to the uh, navigation bar and type in this address. I am Josh dot WordPress dot com. Josh only identifies himself as I am Josh, so we'll just assume that his name is Josh, or that's his identity. Um, he has a blog here where he does stuff on Rails, Flex, and more. Some really cool stuff, but the one thing we're interested in is his preloader code. Okay, once you've scrolled to the bottom and found the search box, go ahead and click inside there and type in Flex Custom Preloader. And this will take us to Josh's entry on the custom preloader. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff here Josh wants to tell us. And it can get pretty complicated if you're a beginner, but please peruse this in Josh's site. He's got some really awesome stuff here. But to go ahead and get started, we're going to go down to like the third paragraph inside of this Flex Custom Preloader uh, blog entry and click on this thing that says Complete Source Code. Once we click on that, we're going to go to a place called box.net where people can house various things on the internet for, for people to download. Just go ahead and click Download, and we'll start downloading. For the sake of this tutorial, I've already downloaded it. And you're going to download this custom preloader-src.zip uh, file. Go ahead and open that up, and you'll find this folder called Source. Go ahead and right-click on that and go to Copy, and then minimize that. Now, we're going to have to get this into Flex, and I'll explain more about what's in the Source folder that we just uh, downloaded. But to get that into Flex, we're going to have to make a new Flex project. Now. We're not going to do it this no normal way or straightforward way where we develop a Flex project first and then go in there and put the source folder in there. We're just going to go ahead and do that already. So go ahead and click to your uh, workspace folder. Now I know by default that Flex makes that My Documents and then Flex Builder 3. So I'm already there, but it might be different on your computer. But find out wherever your workspace is and then create a new folder in there. You can click right-click and then go to New and then click on Folder. And we're going to name this Pre loader fun might as well have some excitement here once you've made that double click on it and once you're inside of here go ahead and right click and then paste that source folder into here easy enough right all right we're done here go ahead and minimize that or x out of it and we're going to open up flex now once we're inside flex i know that we're in the workspace because these were the files that were in there Go up to File, and then go to New, and then go to New Flex Project. Okay, once this comes up, we're going to name the project the exact same name of the folder that we created earlier in Flex Builder 3. So we named it Preloader Fun. Hit Next on that. Hit Next again. All right, and now it's going to ask us a question about what it wants the main application file to be. Now, even though I've named the folder uh, Preloader Fun, by default, Flex is going to assume that's what I want it to be called, but I don't want it to be called that because if you go inside of the source folder that we downloaded, the actual MXML file is called preloader. So just go ahead and make sure that you name this file preloader. Just like our buddy Josh did. Now just hit enter. All right. Once you've done that, it should bring up Josh's MXML file. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing much here. We see the normal application tags at the top. We see a script tag and some data in here. Uh, but if you look at the application tag closely, you'll see that there's a different kind of, I guess, function or whatever called preloader. And this is basically what's going to navigate inside of the folders that we downloaded to the action script files that will take or just kind of take over the uh, preloader thing so that we don't get the same lame old preloader that Flex gives us by default. To find out these folders, look at these. Go over to uh, the source folder that we had, and you'll notice that Josh has included inside that download an assets folder, which is empty right now, 
and an I am Josh folder. Now inside I am Josh, if you continue to navigate through here, it has a samples folder and then a preloader folder, and then we get finally get to the ActionScript files. Go ahead and open up both of these by double clicking on them. All right, if you go ahead and look at the custom preloader, um, you might get a little bit scared because there's a lot of action scripting here. And if you're not a pro or not really familiar with it, it's going to look daunting. Don't be upset. We actually will do nothing with this file itself. It just needs to be there because this file actually talks to the load screen action script file. And in here, Josh has labeled certain things to kind of uh, give us a reference point to what to change. As you can see, he has a progress bar width. Oh, that correlates with right here. So that's 200 pixels long. Height, we have logo picture height and width, which will be important. I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, Josh has pretty much laid all this out for us. Thank you, Josh, so much. Now we're actually going to start making changes to this. The first thing we want to do is change the image. But as you remember, Josh, even though the image is in the assets folder, there is no image inside the download that Josh gives us. I'm not sure why he did that, but we're going to put an image in there. Now, since we're at NKU, I'm just going to put an NKU logo in there. So I'm going to move this, or I'm going to just shrink this down a little bit so we can see these files that are behind here that I've already created. Now, I've already created test mp3 to test mp3 and the NKU logo file. And we're going to put these into the assets folder. Now, the reason we'll put the mp3s in there is for, well, I'll explain that in a moment. But just go ahead and put them in there. Or put your own in there, I should say. Just bring those over there just by dragging. All right, they are now in the assets folder. We can open that up and see them. There they are, NKU logo and the test MP3s. So we're actually going to go over here and we're going to rename this instead of HW and then space logo. We're just going to type in whatever the image we want in there. Right now it's NKU logo, but this can be whatever you want. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a ping. It can be any type of other file like a JPEG or a GIF or whatever. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to leave it a ping. Now, Something else to remember when you're in here changing stuff is that you're going to want to change the logo picture height and width. See them right there? To the exact height and width of the image that you want to load. Now, I, I already know what those are. It just happens to be 140 by 150 pixels. But make sure you pay attention to that whenever you save your image that you're going to want to load here. Something else I'm going to change is I'm going to change the load bar itself. While it's loading, instead of having this color, we're going to put in just NKU's yellow, which I also know to be E82934. It's NKU's nice yellow color. Now I'm also going to change the outer border to just solid black by putting in six zeros. All right, the border and the inner color being white is totally fine, which is represented by the six Fs. So we've pretty much changed everything in here that we're going to need to change for the preloader inside the load screen. And again, those can be whatever you want. Totally customize it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and change the bar width from 200 to 150 so it matches the uh, width of my image that I just put in here. So I'm going to save changes to that by clicking that little save thing or hitting Control S, Command S if you're on a Mac. And we can go ahead and close the load screen and the custom preloader because then we won't do any changes to that. Now, remember when I said that we had to put the MP3s in the assets folder? Well, the reason that Josh put those here is because we're kind of developing this or we're kind of testing this preloader thing, and Flex needs something to load or else we'll never see the preloader thing. It'll just happen in seconds. And like, all right, here's your Flex page. So to do that, he's embedded uh, the test MP3s. Now, I've got another one in there because test MP3 itself, depending on how long it is and whatever length you want, just isn't enough for me, so I'm going to put another one in here. Just by copying that, by hitting Control C, hitting Control V to paste it, renaming the test MP3 to test MP3 2, and changing the variable from file 0 to file 1, because those can't be repeated. Oh. All right, go ahead and hit Control S for that. All right, we're ready to test this thing. Go ahead and hit the play button up here. Ta-da! There you go. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? There's the logo. There's a load. Look, it's loading. How awesome is that? And all the colors we customized and everything. All right. Now, you probably got some questions like, well, this is awesome, Alex. I can go ahead and put this, or I can make these awesome load script preloaders. Uh, but how do I actually get this into my applications, like, for implementation? Well, remember when I said there was this preloader tag up here? 
or this preloader section inside the applications tag. That's all you need to uh, copy and paste and put into your applications, and it'll work. Just make sure that you have the assets folder and the I am Josh folder inside your source folder as well. And that is it. You have custom preloaders. Do whatever you want. Brand your site. This has been Alex, one of Michael Lab's instructional design students at Northern Kentucky University. Thank you so very much for listening.